Okay, good morning, um, everyone, especially to Prince, Michael, John, and Trisha. So today, um, tatapusin natin yung, uh, yung uh, third unit of, or actually fourth unit na pala to ng course, which is about derivatives. But before that, housekeeping muna tayo. Una, due to uh, requests uh, by those who are here today. So I am moving the deadline for problem set number two to Sunday, May 15th. 11:59 p.m. So you get uh, two more days to finish it. So hopefully okay na yon. Kasi nabalitaan ko nga uh, merong tatlo or dalawang problem set yung ginagawa nang sabay-sabay. Buti pala nag-adjust ako sa 175 ano kung hindi si Michael yata sa Jante ko rin yan sa 175. So <laughs> madadagdagan ng isa yung kanyang ginagawa. Pero um, yeah, just to accommodate those requests. So I'll do it. Ah, uh, let's move the deadline for the problem set. And then, um, and then probably I want to have a homework for unit number four. So, siguro pagkatapos na lang ng problem set. So, problem set nyo would be uh, due on Sunday. I'll give you homework number. Uh, uh, ano homework number na ba tayo? Homework number six on Monday 8 a.m. na lang. So, do, uh, and then the deadline would be ilang days ng ating homework. So I think three days, uh, kung okay na in three days. So I'll count the days later, but we'll have homework number six. Uh, alam nyo naman yung homework natin, may iksi lang, di ba? So homework ng Monday morning, and then probably it will be due Wednesday morning, okay? Or Wednesday right before midnight. Okay, so yeah, I think that's good. And then we are, uh, we're in a good pace to finish the course, hopefully earlier, para mabigay ko yung huling problem set after we finish uh, the fifth uh, unit na mas maaga kaysa dun sa ibang mga courses. Kasi alam ko, uh, usually last week of classes, ayan, dyan um, magpa-pile up yung mga requirements nyo. So, I'll try, uh, we'll try to finish it as early as possible. Siguro mag we can finish it one or uh, or two meetings before the end of classes. So, pwede ko naman bigay yung problem set ng mas maaga para hindi siya sumabay dun sa iba yung mga gawain towards the end of the sem. And then our final exam will be as, schedule, uh, as scheduled by the registrar. But as I mentioned, our uh, final exam is just a reflection paper. Hindi naman not just, ano? So gusto seryoso niyo yung reflection paper so that I know uh, what you think and um, about the course and what are your takeaways from it. So at saka ako matatandaan niyo, so one, hindi pala. So the mga sadyante ko ng 101 last semester, alam niyo na talagang ginigrade ko yung reflection paper. Of course, mataas yung mga scores na nakukuha, pero medyo pag feeling ko half-hearted yung pagkakasulat nagma-minus ako ng kaunti ano. Then also part of the final exam would be your evaluation for the course which is actually uh, just for me and probably i-report ko lang dun sa division yung mga vital statistics galing dun sa dun sa response niyo sa evaluation niyo about the course and about myself ano. But I'll primarily use it to uh, to further improve my teaching and the development of this course. Okay. So you know mga things to look forward to. So, but uh, going back to uh, our uh, topic at hand. So last time we started our talk about derivatives and we mentioned na uh, yung konsepto natin dito ng derivative sa Math 155 mm -hmm. ay walang malaking departure mula dun sa natutunan natin from Math 36, right? So there are no changes in the preamble, no additional concepts added na katulad nung ginawa natin sa Math as a first, um, first three units na generalize natin halos, halimbawa yung limits, Generalize natin yung definition and limits, so there are definitely new things there. And then we uh, we look at the uh, very close relationship between limits of functions and limit of sequences. So panibagun dagdag naman yung sa ating mga kalaman. So so derivatives actually, kakonti uh, actually little to no uh, new topics will be introduced. Pero parang refresher siya and mas magfocus tayo dun sa mga theoretical results. Kasi sa Math 36, nakita nyo na na paano mag-compute ng derivatives, ano yung mga rules, ano yung differentiation formulas. So I'm assuming that you're all already adept with those uh, derivative or differentiation techniques in elementary calculus. And that being said, uh, if I give you a homework or a problem set and you need to differentiate a complicated function, don't worry uh, to use all the techniques that you learned from Math uh, 36 kahit hindi natin siya na-prove sa 155. Halimbawa, yung mga formulas ng derivatives, yung mga techniques na nandun, okay nyo lang siyang gamitin. Kasi ang focus ng unit number four is not to recreate or redo what we did in Math 36, but to expound on it 
specifically on the theoretical results. Okay, and then as you might uh, remember last time, we look at a bunch of theorems para in um, referring to the basic properties ng uh, derivatives. So first, we uh, I think this is the first result we had last time. We proven that uh, a function is differentiable. Uh, if that uh, um, we have proven that if a function is differentiable, then it is necessarily continuous at that particular point or at that particular uh, set. Okay. So differentiability implies continuity, but the converse is not true. We know that there are certain uh, continuous functions that are not differentiable. For instance, uh, yung mga functions na may sudden turn. Like the absolute value function, it's continuous, but since the transition is not smooth, so hindi siya nagiging differentiable. Okay, uh, pati yung mga functions na may cusp or yung mga discontinuous functions nga, thanks to corollary, uh, to the converse of the uh, the converse, pero sa contrapositive ng theorem 4.1. And then theorem 4.2, these are um, formulas that you all well know. So ito yung mga Pwede natin to tingnan as the algebraic derivative theorems, which is telling us how to differentiate the sum, the product, uh, the scalar multiple, and a quotient um, with respect to the derivatives of those uh, operands. Okay, so yung mga formulas and the proofs, dinaanan natin. Nakita natin yung mga proofs, it's just a clever way of writing the given um, difference quotient. Ano? So kailangan lang natin maging medyo creative na pumili ng anong ipapang add or subtract or paano isusulat yung isang certain expression to fit our purpose, okay? And this is a common theme in uh, proving and analysis na kailangan talaga medyo uh, may creative thinking na nagaganap, ano? thinking out of the box, trying to see what should be added to this guy, what should be a multiplied or divided na hindi magbabago yung, um, yung value ng no expression, you know? And then we look at the chain rule for derivatives. Hasang hasan na kayo dyan, na para gamitin yan. So wala na tayong example about how to particularly uh, apply the chain rule. So we focused more on, pro uh, on proving it. Tapos, uh, so wala magre-reklamo ha, sa, sa homework or problem set na. Sir, hindi naman tayo nag-example ng paggamit ng chain rule. Uh, sawang sawa na kayo dyan from 30 series. Ano? So I'll just leave that to you. If you need to review how to apply it, then go back to your 36 notes, okay? And then what else? And then I think last time we we uh, we we stopped at the interior extremum theorem, which is basically a theorem that guarantees na ang kapag ka meron kang relative maximum or relative minimum sa isang number, then the derivative at that number is necessary is necessarily equal to zero. This is the foundation of. Uh, our optimization techniques sa 30 series. Ito kasi yung uh, necessary condition kung kailan nagkakaroon ka ng relative extrema. Nagkakaroon ka ng, re uh, kapag ka meron kang relative extrema, necessarily na ang derivative ay nagiging equal kay zero sa number na yun. So kaya yung technique natin sa 36, kinukuha natin yung derivative, inequate kay zero para makita yung critical numbers, and those critical numbers are the candidates for the points of uh, 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 for the numbers, it will give us the relative maximum or the relative minimum over a given interval. Okay. Now, a uh, the contrapositive of the interior extremum theorem will tell us na kapag ka yung derivative ay hindi naging equal kay zero, ibig sabihin si f ay hindi nagkakaroon ng maximum or minimum kay x sub zero. Okay. So yun yung sinasabi ng Contrapositive ng interior extremum theorem and um, math 101 tells us na hindi mo na kailang iprove yung uh, contrapositive kasi yung statement ay equivalent sa contrapositive. All right? So pag hindi nag zero yung um, derivative, ibig sabihin walang chance na maging relative maximum or relative minimum yung value na ibibigay ng isang point sa atin. All right? Now we further generalize the contrapositive kasi yung uh, interior extremum theorem. Uh, requirement niya lang ay sa isang open interval. Pero it also would be uh, helpful to look at ano kaya yung mangyayari dun sa boundary uh, A and B. All right? Kasi yung theorem 4.4, it only talks about functions that are differentiable over an interval, uh, over an open interval A, B. Na kapag ka ka sa open interval A, B, hindi pwede na mag-zero yung derivative, uh, hindi pwede magkaroon ng relative maxima or minima 
unless nagzi-zero yung derivative sa isang point doon sa loob ng open interval. Now, I want to generalize this into saying na kahit sa endpoints, nag-hold yung requirement na yun. Na kapag ka sa endpoints ay hindi naging equal kay zero yung derivative, then ibig sabihin hindi magkakaroon, hindi uh, main point na mas maliit yung function value doon sa function value doon sa magkabilang endpoints. And actually in the same vein, uh, possibly uh, hindi rin magiging relative Ah, uh, hindi pala pwedeng sabihin relative maximum no kasi ang relative dapat na sa isang open interval. So, let me clarify that. Okay. So, gusto ko siyang i-generalize into saying something about the behavior of the function at the endpoints A and B. So, hindi lang kailangan differentiable siya sa open, pero i-generalize ko na siya sa closed interval. Kapag ka yung derivative dun sa dalawang endpoints, say A and B, ay hindi naging equal kay zero, then we are sure that within the closed interval there is a point that will give us a value, a function value that is smaller than the function value at the endpoints. Tapos, uh, I think it can also be shown uh, using similar arguments na makikita natin sa proof mamaya na magkakaroon din ng isang function, uh, ng isang, uh, ng isang x value doon sa loob ng interval a, b na ang function value doon sa number na yun ay mas malaki doon sa function value doon sa dalawang endpoints. So it just tells us na yung interior yung uh, contrapositive ng interior extremum theorem ay mag-hold din doon sa magkabilang endpoints. Kailan ko lang siyang ihiwalay and actually I wrote it as a lemma 4.1 kasi nga um, hindi ko na define yung relative extrema sa endpoints. Laging open interval yan. Kasi para maging relative maximum ka, dapat ikaw yung pinakamataas na function value sa isang neighborhood that is properly contained in the interval. So kung nandun ka sa endpoint, hindi ka pwedeng makipag, hindi ka mag, base sa definition natin ng MAT36, hindi ka pwedeng maging relative maximum kung nandun ka sa endpoint. Kasi kung nandun ka sa endpoint, walang, um, walang comparison dun sa Halimbawa sa kung ikaw ay left endpoint, walang function value na mako-compare mula dun sa kaliwa mo. So, pero kasi ang definition ng relative extrema dapat ikaw yung pinakamalaki sa isang open interval centered at the number. Okay? So I hope you uh, you see that subtle technicality there kasi baka nag-iisip kayo, sir, bakit mo papipurob yung lemma 4.1? Eh contrapositive lang yan nung lemma anong theorem 4.4, you know? So, uh, so, but basically, ito yung formal statement tung matag yung kuneto ko in the last uh, minute or so. Okay, so we assume that G is differentiable on the closed interval AB. Tapos kapag ka hindi naging zero, yung derivative doon sa, doon sa magkabilang endpoints, all right? And in particular, G prime of A is negative and G prime of B is positive, okay? Then there will exist X and Y in the open interval such that the function value at x is less than g of a. Ito yung sinasabi ko na dahil hindi naging zero, yung derivative doon sa left endpoint, hindi siya pwedeng maging minimum. Hindi siya pwedeng maging absolute minimum because we can find an x within the open interval a, b whose function value is strictly less than g of a. Tapos ganun din yung mangyayari dun sa right endpoint dahil yung g prime of b ay hindi naging zero. Therefore, hindi siya pwedeng maging absolute minimum doon sa closed interval. Okay? So, hindi siya absolute minimum doon sa closed interval. So, therefore, there will exist a number in the open interval whose function value is strictly smaller than the function value at the right endpoint b. Okay? So, iwan ko na yung proof sa inyo. So, napahaba ko siyang kwento ko. Ano? So, the proof is uh, left as an exercise. Pero mahalaga to kasi itong lemma 4.1, gagamitin ko yan para ma-prove yung Darbo's theorem for the derivative. Okay? So, take uh, take 30 seconds to read Darbo's theorem habang sisip-sip muna ako ng kape. All right, so Darbo's theorem for the derivative is actually a sort of a version 
ng intermediate value theorem para sa derivative. Uh, makikita niyo kung bakit. So our assumption here, unlike sa IVT na continuity lang yung kailangan, dito ang i-assume ko ay ang kailangan natin ay si F dapat ay differentiable. Okay? And actually, uh, kapag ka naman siya ay differentiable, then siya ay uh, automatically continuous na. No? So, pero dito, actually hindi ko pala yung magagamit kasi ang, kaya, ang gusto kong gamitan dito or magkaroon ng, uh, ng parang intermediate value property ay yung derivative. So just to make sure that the derivatives are all, all defined, we will assume that f is differentiable on the entire interval a, b. Okay. Tapos, kung meron kang isang number, alpha, na nasa pagitan ng derivative ng dalawang endpoints, either it is smaller than f prime of a and uh, sorry, larger than f prime of a and smaller that, than f prime of b, or the other way around, basa si alpha na sa pagitan ng function ba, anong derivatives sa magkabilang endpoints then we are sure that there exists a number C in the interior of the closed interval AB such that the value of the derivative at that number C, typo error again, ay equal kay alpha. Okay? So, kaya makikita nyo, ah, parang intermediate value theorem lang talaga ito. So, kasi nga, May isang number alpha na sa pagitan ng function value at the two endpoints. Then sabi ng Darboe's theorem, ah okay, lagi kang may makikita na number dun sa loob ng closed interval ng function value ng derivative ay equal kay alpha. So talagang IVT version ito for derivatives except possibly for the uh, for the uh, restriction or for the uh, for the antecedent. Ang antecedent nito dapat si f i differentiable doon sa closed interval AB. Okay? Now, kahit sabi ko kamukha siya ng IVT, apparently the proof will not use IVT at all. Kasi medyo, ang, sa, ang kailangan kasi natin para ma-apply yung IVT, yung function kung saan natin i-apply yung IVT, dapat ay continuous. Okay? Kaya lang dito sa Darboe's theorem, medyo kulang yung information natin. Kasi ang alam natin dito si FI differentiable. So it will follow that uh, f is continuous, but we don't know if f prime is continuous or not. Because if f prime is continuous, then Darboe's theorem is simply IVT, right? Pero hindi ko nga magagamit yon. So dadaan ako ng konting pasikot-sikot para masulat yung proof ng Darboe's theorem. And let's see how it was written in the uh, lecture notes, and then we'll just try to insert some details. So uh, like in any... Uh, Ito nga yung, may, uh, ito yung major theme na sinasabi ko sa mga proofs analysis. Lagi na lang may mga sumusulpot na kinoconstruct na special functions. And they are designed uh, for the sake of what is to follow. Okay? So for instance here, we will go through the auxiliary function G defined as f of x minus uh, alpha x. Uh, excuse me guys. All right, so we are defining the function g to be f of x minus alpha x on the closed interval AB. You might be wondering, bakit ko to kailangan? You know? So uh, the idea here is, gusto kong ipakita na yung f prime of c ay equal kay alpha. So basically, kung makikita nyo rito, ah, yung right-hand side dito, pag dinifferentiate ka, maging f prime minus alpha, right? So if I can find a way to make f prime of x minus alpha equal to zero, then we will be done. Kaya yun yung kinonsider na function g dito sa proof. Okay? And then some good notes about the function g. The LCF i differentiable on an interval a, b. There, and we know that alpha x being a polynomial, it will be con uh, it will be differentiable everywhere. Okay, from at 36. So therefore, g being the difference of two differentiable functions will also be differentiable. Tapos dahil differentiable yan, so pwede natin compute yung derivative using the algebraic derivative theorem. So we had uh, last time, kunin yung derivative equals siya dito, f prime of x minus alpha. Okay? And then uh, we will use this assumption, f prime of a less than alpha less than f prime of b. 
para masabi na, okay, kung totoo yan, then si g prime of a ay less than zero, tapos si g prime of b ay greater than zero. Okay? Why? Because we know that alpha is uh, smaller that, than f prime of a. So when we plug in a here, so f prime of a minus alpha, that will be negative, right? So kaya ko to nakuha. Tapos dahil si alpha ay mas maliit sa f of b, then yung g prime of b ay magiging positive naman. Okay? So, yun pa rin, yung kagandahan kung bakit ganun yung pagkakadesign kay function G. Kailangan ko to para magamit yung lemma 4.1. Na since G prime of A and G prime of B are opposite in signs at hindi sila nag-zero, then ibig sabihin, uh, yun na ba yung gamitin ko? Uh, so, ibig sabihin, hindi siya pwedeng maging maximum or minimum. Right? So, yung maximum at saka minimum ay actually in particular yung absolute minimum ay hindi mag occur sa endpoints A and B. Kasi yung derivatives ay hindi nag-zero sa kanila. Okay? So, kung hindi nag occur yung maximum or minimum sa dalawang endpoints, sigurado ba tayo na merong isang magpapa-maximum or minimum doon sa function G sa interval A, B? Well, the answer is given by the EVT. Now, G is, um, since G is differentiable on the closed interval AB by theorem 4.1, 4.1, it explains si G a continuous on the closed interval AB. And the closed interval AB is a compact set. So by the intermediate value theorem, which tells us that every compact, uh, every the continuous function on a compact set attains a maximum and minimum at the compact set. So, ibig sabihin, merong maximum at minimum si, uh, si G sa isang point or sa, sa mga, sa, sorry, kailangan ko itong i-rephrase. Meron siyang absolute minimum or maximum sa isang point C in AB. Now, the maximum and the minimum did not occur simultaneously at the number C. Posible magkaiba yung C na magbibigay ng minimum at maximum. Yun yung gusto kong i-clarify nga pala dito sa state na to, alright? So in particular, G will attain a minimum at the point C in AB. Tapos ang sabi natin ng uh, sabi dun sa uh, interior extremum theorem, dahil merong kang minimum sa number C, therefore dapat yung G prime of C ay equal kay zero. And then since that is equal to zero, um, yung derivative ay equal kay zero, compute natin yung G prime of C. So yung G prime of C, I where? And dito siya. We know that G prime of C will be zero. Tapos yung G prime of C should be computed this way. So that, that will just be F prime of C minus alpha. And so simple transposition will tell us that F prime of C is indeed equal to alpha. So the uh, Darbo's theorem, or uh, the proof of Darbo's theorem did not just establish yung gusto mong sabihin ng theorem, pero binigay niya sa atin paano mahanap yung number na C na magbibigay sa atin ng value na alpha para dun sa derivative. So yung number na C na yun, siya yung maximizer o minimizer ng function G na ito. Okay? So any questions, guys? Okay naman? I hope the proof makes sense. Or meron pa rin kayong, ano, uh, meron pa rin kayong election hangover? <laughs> well, yeah, we don't have any choice and uh, but to move forward. And if your candidate lost, I hope that we were wrong. If your candidate won, uh, hopefully you're right. And also, yun na lang yung masasabi natin. Um, yeah, we should keep moving forward, you know. Okay, so let's go to the next uh, section. Actually, this is the last section for uh, for the unit, and it's about the mean value theorem. So this should ring some be uh, some bells on you guys. Kasi nakita nyo na to sa 36, ano, isa to sa mga uh, theorems. Pero ang problema sa 36 ay hindi natin napapakita yung full potential ng mean value theorem. 
we will see later na ang daming results ang nangangailangan ng mean value theorem. So siguro on its own, you might be thinking na, ah, kahirap lang yan ng 36. Pinagahanap lang tayo ng number C na nagbibigay ng mean value uh, insofar as the derivative is concerned. You know? So, pero actually, some of the useful results in analysis all are hinged, or some of them are hinged on the mean value theorem, katulad ng L'Hopital's rule. Makikita natin mamaya ng proof ng L'Hopital's rule, at least one of its cases, ay nakadepende sa isang generalization ng mean value theorem. Okay? But before we go to uh, the actual mean value theorem, tingnan muna natin yung parang baby theorem ng MVT. And this is called Rolle's theorem, which is a specific case ng MVT, pero kahit specific case siya, sa analysis kasi may paraan na mag-contrive yung uh, mga special cases para ma-prove yung general cases by the way of using generic functions. So yun yung isa pang peculiar thing about analysis. So tingnan natin, ano yung sinabi ni Rolle? Sabi ng theorem niya, uh, consider, mag-consider tayo ng isang function f whose domain is a closed interval a, b, and that f is continuous there and differentiable on the open interval a, b. Then if f of a is equal to f of b, then there exists a number c in the interior or dun sa open interval a, b, such that ang f prime of c ay equal kay zero. Para nangyayari dito sa Rolle's theorem, okay, pagkas meron kang a at saka b rito, tapos parehas yung function value nila, sabihin natin say y1, okay, tapos yung function natin ay uh, differentiable sa closed at continuous sa open, so meaning the graph should be continuous and smooth, so ibig sabihin kailangan ko itong drawing ng continuous and smooth, tanbawa yan yung graph ko, ang sabi ng Rolle's theorem, Sure tayo na laging merong isang point doon sa open interval na ang slope ng tangent line ay equal kay zero. Yun yung derivative, right? Our, inter our geometric interpretation for the value of the derivative is that it is the slope of the tangent line passing through the specific point. So that means there is a point on the curve of f on the uh, open interval a, b whose tangent line is horizontal. And apparently, oops. Horizontal nga, di ba? So, yun. So, yan yung point na horizontal, ay, yan yung point na horizontal in tangent line. Actually, this make, uh, this, uh, this will give us uh, another perception about, uh, about how the function f behaves on the close interval a, b. Dahil kung meron kang isang point, kung saan horizontal yung tangent line, ibig sabihin yung point na yun is a nice candidate para maging um, abs, uh, relative maximum or relative minimum. Okay, So if your function is differentiable and continuous, it can be shown that as long as the function values at the two endpoints are equal to each other, then there will always exist a relative maximum and a relative minimum. Okay, Doon sa buong interval A, B na yun. Pero I think may additional... Uh, my additional results akong kailangan para ma-prove yung statement na yun kasi ang kailangan ko doon ay yung assertion na pagka zero yung derivative dapat meron kang relative max or relative min and we don't know uh, we we know that that uh, doesn't uh, always happen okay so para sa mga well behaved functions so to yon pero in general hindi siya nagiging totoo okay but anyway going back to Rolle's theorem Try natin i-prove yung Rolle's theorem. Ano? Actually, medyo straightforward lang naman yung proof ng Rolle's theorem. So we know that f is uh, continuous on the closed interval a, b by assumption. Then dahil si a, b ay compact set, tapos si f ay continuous by the extreme value theorem, or some people call it the Weierstrass theorem, okay? si f ay merong minimum at saka maximum value sa a, b. Okay, so EVT ang ginamit dito. Tapos, kunwari, yung maximum at saka minimum ay nag-occur sa dalawang endpoints. So, kung yung function mo, uh, meron kang function, A, B, tapos yung maximum at saka yung minimum ay sabay na nag-occur dun sa dalawang endpoints, 
Pero remember, yung dalawang endpoints ay equal yung function value. So, ibig sabihin, yung maximum at saka minimum doon sa buong interval ay parehas lang na value. So, ibig sabihin, yung function natin ay constant all throughout the closed interval A, B. Kasi nga, sabay na naging maximum at saka minimum yung common value nung, uh, nung uh, function kay A at saka kay B. It will just be a constant, and since it is a constant, the derivative will be equal to zero all throughout the closed interval A, B. Okay? So, yun yung sinasabi nito. Right? Tapos, eh, ano naman ngayon kung ang maximum at saka minimum ay hindi nag-occur dun sa magkabilang endpoints. Okay? So, kung yung maximum at saka minimum ay nag-exist, Pero doon lamang sa isang interior point, then ang sabi ng theorem 4.4, okay, kung meron kang maximum o minimum sa isang point, dapat yung derivative doon sa point na yon ay equal kay zero. So kung yung uh, nagpapa-maximum o nagpapa-minimum doon sa function f, which we know to exist, right? alam na natin nag exist siya by EVT, ay isang interior point. So in that interior point, then yung derivative ay necessarily equal kay zero. And that gives us yung Rolle's theorem. Okay? Pinuprove nga bang Rolle's theorem sa 36? Kung matanda akong pinuprove, pero I think sa 36 level, kaya na siyang i-prove ano, after lamang nung extreme value theorem. But anyway, so that's Rolle's theorem. And then we try to generalize it. So ang requirement kasi ng Rolle's theorem equal yung uh, function value dun sa magkabilang endpoints. Paano ngayon kung hindi na sila equal sa isa't isa? Now our version for that is the mean value theorem. Now the mean value theorem requires us to put the, dish, uh, the same assumptions as uh, Rolle's theorem. Dapat si F ay continuous sa closed interval A, B at differentiable sa open. Tatanggalin natin yung requirement ng F of A ay equal kay F of B. Tapos ang sinasabi ng mean value theorem, may isang number doon sa open interval AB where the derivative is equal to the mean value of the function. Ito yung tinatawag natin na mean value. Okay? So basically, merong isang point doon sa, doon sa open interval AB, doon sa interior ng domain, ng function value ng derivative ay equal sa f of b minus f of a all over b minus a. And this should look familiar to you guys kasi ano, anong quantity ang nire-represent nitong right-hand side? Sige nga, anyone? Nakalimutan ko na minsan magpa-recite eh, no? So, ano yung nire-represent ang right-hand side nung, uh, mean nung equation sa mean value theorem? Aba, nag-drawing ako. Anyone? So, anong quantity ang nire-represent nito? Ayaw? Ayaw niyo sumagot? Yeah, Michael and Jericho are correct. Yeah, tama. Yung slope. Um, um, Nire-represent yan. Slope ng function, uh, ng function f, right? Uh, or actually, hindi slope ng function f. Pero slope ng line passing through a f of a and b f of a. Because this is your change in... Um, this is change of y, this is change in x. So, pwede mo siyang tingnan talaga as slope, right? So, basically, if our function is like this, siya ay continuous, dun sa close differentiable sa open, so isa tong smooth continuous graph. Halimbawa, ito yung smooth continuous graph natin. Okay? Tapos yung f of a, uh, ah, yung f of b minus f of a all over b minus a, siya yung slope ng line na magpa-pass through kay a at saka kay b. So, limbawa, ito yung, yeah. So, ito yung slope nito ay equal dun sa right-hand side. Uh, F uh, of B minus F of A all over B minus A, right? So, kasi ang function value dito ay yung uh, F of A pa rin. Function value dito ay F of B pa rin. 
Tapos yung x value ay b, x value ay a. So talagang yung slope ng orange line ay equal dun sa right hand side ng ating uh, ng equation dun sa MVT. Tapos ang sabi ni MVT, merong isang point doon sa interval a, b na ang value ng derivative ay equal dito sa slope na to. But what is the derivative again? The derivative is simply the slope of the tangent line at a particular point on the curve, right? So, ibig sabihin, para mapapat, mapatotohanan yung MVT, kailangan ko lang makahanap ng isang number C na, sa pag, na nasa pagitan ni A and B na yung tangent line ay isang translation lamang na ito nakadrawing ng line na to na orange line dito sa screen para parehas sila ng slope. So, in, in that case, so mag-shop lang ako ng isang point kung saan itong orange line yung magiging tangent line. And apparently, ito yun. Alright? So, ito yung point na yan. Ito yung number C na hinahanap noong um, MVT o yung ginagarantiyahan ng MVT na nag-exist. Alright? Kasi nga, ang slope niyan, uh, this uh, tangent line will be parallel to the, uh, will be parallel to the uh, secant line passing through the two endpoints. So, yun yung idea ng MVT. The MVT is silent about how to compute for this number C. Uh, you, so you need your uh, algebra techniques or your algebra tools in order to find C. And it, and it is also silent about how many such Cs exist. Sinasabi niya lang, merong at least isa. Pero hindi niya sinabi talaga kung ilan. Posibleng marami, posibleng nag-iisa lang. Okay? Now, uh, this is a generalization of... Uh, this is a generalization of... Uh, Rolle's theorem, kasi kung Rolle's theorem yan, ah, uh, sorry, uh, ang assumption sa Rolle's theorem natin ay, oops, ang function values sa magkabilang endpoints ay parehas, ay, actually, ay equal sa isa't isa. Tapos, meron kang smooth continuous function dyan, okay? And then, ang nangyari lang sa Rolle's theorem, yung line passing through the two endpoints ay isa lamang horizontal line, okay? Tapos, dahil horizontal line, sinasabi lang ni MVT, na meron dapat isa pang point doon sa merong isang point doon sa interval na ang tangent line ay horizontal tapos ang slope ng horizontal line ay equal kay 0 so kaya specific case ng MVT yung Rolle's theorem but the odd thing here is that i guess i will use the role, uh, i will use Rolle's theorem para ma-prove yung mas malaking theorem kaya baka isipin niyo ang swerte naman ni Rolle kasi <laughs> kung meron ng MVT nung panahon niya Nagdagdag lang siya ng assumption ng f of b ay equal kay f of a. So kung ang f of a ay equal kay f of b, so etong numerator ay magiging equal kay 0. So ayun, f prime of c equals 0 na. So parang sabi niya, ang dali ng buhay ni Rol, ano? Pero I'm not sure about the development, pero siguro na-attribute pa rin or nabigyan ng pangalan yung theorem ni Rol. Either, una siyang na-invento kaysa sa MVT. Actually, dapat una siyang na yeah, either nauna siya na invento sa MVT or in-invento siya or napakita na siya ay pwedeng gamitin pang proof ng MVT. Alright? Kasi yun yung makikita natin dito. Sa so proof ng MVT, gagamitin natin yung Rolle's theorem. Paano natin siya gagamitin? Well, we will be playing with the equation of the uh, secant line passing through the two endpoints. So, sabi nga kanina ni, uh, ni, uh, ni Michael at saka ni Jericho na yung nasa kanan ng equation sa MVT ay slope ng line na nagpa-pass through dun sa dalawang endpoint. So, the, 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 the natural question is, ano yung equation ng line na nagpa-pass through dun sa dalawang endpoints? So, using, uh, using the, the technique you... Uh, Actually, ang tawag sa technique, ito ay 2.4 uh, of a line mula sa analytic geometry. So, equation ng line passing through dun sa dalawang endpoints ay ito. Oops, sorry. Ay ito. And then, for some reasons that will be apparent later, I will define an auxiliary function D. I define ko siya to be f of x minus this guy. Okay, isipin nyo naman, sir, bakit na naman nag-construct ng function d? Bakit yan yung napili na function d 
na paglaruan. Kasi pag ito yung paglalaruan ko ang function, pag kinuha ko yung derivative ng parehas na side, okay? pag kinuha ko yung d prime, so ito ay magiging f prime, tapos ito ay linear function, alam natin ang derivative ng linear function ay yung slope lamang niya. All right? So this would be f prime of x minus this guy. And if we can if we can find a way to make that equal to zero, then we're done. Yun na yung conclusion ng mean value theorem because we'll be able to show that f prime of c is equal to this guy. Kaya nag zero yung d prime. Okay. Tapos, ah, oh, kailan nga nag zero ang derivative? Or paano natin napapa zero ang derivative? Ah, pag nasatisfy yung requirement ng Rolle's theorem. Kasi pag nasatisfy yung requirements ng Rolle's theorem, then automatic na yung derivative ay nagiging equal kay zero sa isang number c in the uh, in the open interval. Okay? So ano pa yung kulang natin? Or actually, tingnan muna natin, nasasatisfy nga ba yung requirements ng Rolle's theorem para sa function na d? Well, si f I assume to be differentiable on the closed interval a, b. Ah, sorry, continuous on the closed interval a, b. And this guy being a polynomial, it's a linear function. So this is also continuous on the closed interval a, b. So that means d being the sum of two continuous functions is also continuous. And then similar argument will hold para naman sa differentiability. F is assumed to be differentiable on the open. This guy is differentiable everywhere. Then their difference will be differentiable on the open interval AB. So okay na, kasado na yung dalawang requirements ng Rolle's theorem. Yung pangatlong requirement ng Rolle's theorem dapat equal yung function values sa magkabilang dulo. Okay? So madali lang naman yun. We are keeping our fingers crossed ngayon. Pag in-evaluate ko dapat si D of A, dapat equal siya kay D of B. Now let's see. If I plug in x equals a, a yan, maging a ito, ito yung maging a. Alright, so this guy will be zero, the first term here, kasi nga, magkakaroon ka ng a minus a times the slope. So this entire thing will be zero. And then f of a minus f of a, boom, nag zero na siya. Okay. So d of a is equal to zero. So isa na lang yung kailangan natin. d of b must be equal to zero then. So d of b, I equal sa f of b, then ito ay b minus a. Yun na lang yata yun, pwede kong masubstitute. Pero, ah, okay, b minus a times b minus a. Uh, equal yan kay 1, they cancel each other out. f of b, o, oh, minus f of a, plus f of a, magsizero rin yan. So, essentially, we'll have f of b minus f of b na lang din. So, okay, luckily, d of b is also equal to 0. Hindi pala luckily kasi pin, pinlano yan. Kaya yan yung, function, yung auxiliary function na dinefine para dito. So all in all, we have satisfied the requirements of Rolle's theorem. Dahil na-satisfy na yung requirements ni Rolle's theorem, sabi niya, merong isang number doon sa open interval na ang derivative ay nagiging equal kay zero. Okay? Tapos, okay, yung derivative ay equal kay zero, so compute na natin yung derivative ni D. Pag kinumpute yung derivative ni D, magkakaroon lang tayo ng f prime of x minus the uh, slope of the secant line. Dinifferentiate ko lang yan. Tapos, ito yung nakuha ko. And then plug in C. When we plug in C in here, alam natin magsizero yon. Plug in C in here. Ito lang naman yung mababago. So f prime of C. And then we transpose this guy to the other side. And we see the conclusion of the mean value theorem. Okay, and that ends the proof. Okay, questions? Parang ang dali lang ng proof, ano? Ang dali niyang subay, uh, sundan, pero ang value ng proof talaga ay dun sa pagkakadefine ng auxiliary function D. So, kumbaga, dyan mo babayaran yung mathematician. Alright, sa so, pag-design pag ng auxiliary function G. Kasi yun yung pinaka-crucial na element ng proof and everything else is quite straightforward. Of course, thanks to Rolle's theorem. Okay, 
And then the mean value theorem gives us some nice properties, some nice further properties for the derivatives. Yun yung mga nasa sumusunod na corollaries. Yung unang corollary na titingnan natin ay kapag ka yung derivative ay laging zero doon sa buong interval, then constant lamang yung function doon sa interval na yun. Okay? So again, if g prime of x is always equal to zero for any x in the interval i, then sa buong interval i, constant function damang si g. Okay? So tingnan natin, bakit daw to anak ng MVT? So, alright, so ito yung proof. Mag-consider tayo ng dalawang arbitrary numbers in the interval. Okay, so x and y can take any form. And without loss of generality, we can assume that x is less than y. Kasi kung mas maliit naman si y, edi pagpalitan mo, pag, pag, uh, ipagpalit lang natin yung pangalan nilang dalawa. Okay, so that's why we can assume without uh, losing generality that x is smaller than y. Tapos, si g i differentiable on an interval i. Then, uh, by MVT, may mahanap tayo na isang number. Uh, medyo meron pala tayong dapat i-insert dito, no? So, si... Uh, alam natin si g ay differentiable sa i. So, alam natin siya ay continuous sa i. So, yan yung mga conclusions natin. Okay. Tapos, kumuha ko ng dalawang numbers na nandun sa loob ng interval i. So, if x is less than y, then the closed, uh, then uh, well-defined yung closed interval x, y. So, ibig sabihin si g ay magiging differentiable sa closed interval x, y. Kasi yung closed interval x, y ay nandun sa interior ng interval i. Dahil si g ay differentiable sa buong interval i, si g ay magiging differentiable dun sa subset na closed interval x, y. Kasi nga, para maging differentiable sa isang set, dapat differentiable ka sa lahat ng elements ng set na yon. Kaya kung differentiable siya sa isang malaking set, differentiable na rin siya sa kahit anong set, uh, sa kahit anong subset ng malaking set. Okay? And then also, this will tell us that G will be continuous on the closed interval AB, but in particular on the open interval AB. So, nasasatisfy na natin yung dalawang condition ng mean value theorem. So, sabi ng mean value theorem, may mag exist na isang number C doon sa interval XY, sa open interval XY, which is a subset of I, such that the derivative at the number C will be equal to the mean value over the interval X, Y. Okay? Tapos, part of our assumption here ay si G prime of X ay equal kay zero sa lahat ng X sa interval I. Dahil si C ay nasa interval I, ang derivative ni G sa C ay equal kay zero. So this guy will be equal to zero, and the only way that the quotient will be equal to zero is when the numerator is equal to zero. Okay? Tapos magzero lang yung numerator kapag ka si G of Y ay equal kay G of X. And that's what we wrote in here. Tawagin natin yung constant val ay yung common value nilang dalawa as the number k. Alright? Okay. Tapos ano ngayon yung... What's the deal here? Si x at saka si y ay arbitrarily chosen. So pag pumili ako ng kahit anong x doon sa interval i, or kahit, pag pumili ako ng kahit anong pair, x, y, na numbers doon sa interval i, laging ang function value kong nakukuha ay equal kay k. So, ibig sabihin sa buong interval i, dapat ang function value ng kahit anong point ay equal dapat kay k. Kasi nga, random yung pagkakapili or arbitrary yung pagkakapili kay x and y. So, x and y represents any element of the closed interval i. And apparently, whatever the value of x and y are, as long as it is on the interval i, laging equal kay k yung function value. So that means G must be constant all throughout the interval I. So para nabubu, uh, meron na tayong if and only if statement kapag ka nagzi-zero yung derivative sa isang interval. Ano? Kasi alam na natin ang derivative ng constant ay equal kay zero from at 36. Tapos itong corollary na to tells us na kapag ka laging zero yung derivative, then your function is necessarily constant. 
So kaya pwede na natin ngayon tanggapin na ang ang, uh, ang function lamang, ang mga functions lamang na nakakapagbigay ng zero function bilang derivative ay yung mga constant functions. Wala nang iba. Right? Tapos yung corollary 4.2 naman ay isa sa mga uh, uh, results na ginagamit na natin mula sa Math 36. This tells us na kapag ka meron kang dalawang function na equal yung derivative, okay? Hindi necessarily na equal si f at saka si g, but we know for certain that f and g will differ only by a constant. Okay? Ah, uh, yun yung sinasabi nito. Ito ay ginagamit natin sa integrals na, 'di ba, sa anti-differentiation, lagi nagkaka-constant of uh, integration na plus c dun sa dulo. Bakit may plus c? Kasi nga walang effect yung pagde-differentiate ng isang constant dun sa sum. Kasi ang derivative ng constant lamang ay zero. So, yun yung sinasabi natin na kapag ka equal yung antiderivatives, then yung dalawang functions dapat ay merong ay nagdi-differ lamang by a constant. At yun yung sinasabi ng corollary 4.2. If you got two functions that share the same derivative over an interval i, then those two functions only differ by a constant. In particular, f of x minus g of x is equal to a constant k all throughout the interval i. Okay? So yung proof ay exercise, pero madali lang naman. Binigay niya na nga dito yung function ay consider natin, yung f of x minus g of x. Well, how will the proof? Uh, how can you write the proof? Well, at the yung idea, ah, uh, si f at saka si g a differentiable in the open interval. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Consider down natin si h. What can we say about h? H will be um. H will be differentiable on the interval i, tama? Kasi f and g are both differentiable. So H will be differentiable on the interval i. Dahil differentiable siya sa interval i, pwede natin gamitin yung algebraic uh, derivative theorems, which tells us that f prime of x i equals to f prime of x minus g prime of x. Okay, and then we know here that f prime of x ay laging equal kay g prime of x over the interval. So apparently, h prime of x will be equal to zero for all x in the interval i. Tapos pwede kong gamitin yung corollary 4.1. Ah, si h, ang derivative niya ay laging zero sa buong interval i. So ibig sabihin si h prime, ah, si h dapat ay constant sa buong interval uh, I. At dahil si H ay constant, send by equal si H. Si H ay equal sa F of X minus G of X. So si F of X minus G of X dapat ay equal kay K. And then you just need to transpose G to the other side. You'll get the conclusion of corollary 4.2. Okay. So, eto na. So, kaya pwede nyo nang paniwalaan talaga yung, yung result natin mula sa Math 36. Ayan, dalawang theorems na lang. Generalized mean value theorem na lang at saka L'Hopital's rule. Sige, uh, two-minute break muna tayo guys para pang-absorb ng mga ginawa natin. Ramdam nyo na ba ang pressure ng paparating na pagtatapos ng SEM? Oh, by the way, meron ba sa inyong mga graduating this uh, coming uh, semester? Hindi ko alam kung na-announce na, pero mukhang... Mukhang ha, uh, with the emphasis on mukhang, mukhang face-to-face -face ang graduation uh, for uh, uh, this August. Tapos meron rin natang CAS testimonials uh, na gagawin. Pin uh, Pinaplano siya to be face-to-face. -face. Pero syempre fluid pa rin naman ang mga bagay-bagay as far as COVID is concerned. Pero si Teres Paribus, uh, 
Tama ba? Ano nga si Teres Paribus? Keeping all elements uh, constant. Pero kung magka... Di pala si Teres Paribus, sorry. Kapag uh, merong ano, pagka ang status quo ay na-maintain, ano, as far as uh, fun, uh, the pandemic levels are concerned, we might see the first uh, post-pandemic graduation of face-to-face ng UPLB and cast testimonials. So that means... Um, pag kayo nang graduate kung gagraduate kayo ngayon, baka makita-kita tayo sa graduation. Or kung next time pa kayo graduate mas uh, may malaking chance na makapunta kayo ng UPL, makabalik kayo ng UPL, you know, at least for the graduation. Okay. Sige, tuloy na natin. Uh, GMVT na. GMVT is a generalization of the mean value theorem. Ito naman, dalawahang functions yung consider. Ano? So ito ay parang mean value of a function with respect to another function or the relative uh, the relative changes between two functions f and g. So ano yung sinasabi ng generalized MVT? Kailangan natin ng dalawang functions, f and g, na parehas continuous sa closed interval a, b, at differentiable sa open interval AB. Tapos ang sinasabi niya, may nag-exist na isang number C sa interior ng closed interval AB such that the following equation is true. Okay, ano yung sinasabi ng equation na yan? So, yung change kay F from B to A times the instantaneous rate of change at C ay equal sa change kay G from B to A times the instantaneous rate of change at C by F. <coughs> oh, sorry, excuse me, guys. Akala ta na ako, tuwing nagtuturo ako, saka ako uh, inatake ng runny nose ng uh, allergic rhinitis ng kung ano-ano-ano. Ano. <laughs> Allergic talaga sa pagtuturo. Anyway, <laughs> that joke lang. Uh, yeah, yun siya sabi niya. Pero mas maganda tong tingnan using, a, uh, using the quotient. Kapag ka si G prime ay never nag-zero, then we can divide both sides uh, by G prime times G of B minus G of A. So may typo rito. Nakorek ko na to dun sa version na uh, lecture notes na in-upload ko kaninang umaga. So, dapat G prime yung nasa ilalim. So, F prime over C prime, the ratio between the instantaneous rate uh, rates of change at C I equals the ratio of the change of F and G. So, ibig sabihin yung, uh, yung change in F uh, over the interval AB relative to the, to the, to the change in the function g all throughout the interval a b is equal to the ratio between the instantaneous rate of change of f and g at a particular number c in the interior of the interval so yun yung sinasabi niya so bakit siya sinabing generalization ng mean value theorem kasi kapag kang ginawa mong g of x ay equal kay x tama ba to um Yeah, kapag kang ginawa mong g of x ay equal kay x, so yung derivative ay laging equal kay 1. So ito ay magiging equal kay 1. Tapos ang g ang g of b ay equal kay b at ang g of a ay equal kay a kasi nga si g ay identity function lang. So this guy is essentially b minus a lamang. Okay. Tapos you can divide both sides by b minus a magkakaroon ka lang ng f prime of c equals f of b minus f of a all over b minus a. So talagang ito ay ang MVT ay specific case lang ng GMVT and para makita yon gumamit tayo, tinake natin si g to be, the cons, uh, to be the linear function x or the identity function g of x equals x. Tapos yung proof ng GMVT ay... Uh, Rolle's theorem yung gagamitin. Uh, luckily, binigay na sa atin kung ano yung uh, auxiliary function na gagamitin. It turns out, ito yung gagamitin natin. Ito si function h. Tapos, gamitin daw natin si Rolle's theorem dito. So, tingnan natin. 
Now, to use Rolls Theorem, or bakit ko nalaman na kailangan ko ng Rolls Theorem? Kasi, pag nag-differentiate tayo nito, differentiate natin yan. Okay? So, eto nang nasa right-hand side, eto yung mga expressions na nandoon sa conclusion ng MVT. Kasi ito yung change in F times the, the, the rate of change in G. Change in G times the rate of change in F. So essentially, ito yung magkabilang side noong equation sa GMVT. So pag napakita natin na ito ay equal kay 0, ibig sabihin tapos sa tayo. Mapapakita na natin ng G of B minus F of A times G prime of C ay equal sa G of B minus G of A times F prime of C for some numbers in the open interval A, B. So yun ang goal natin. Mapakita ng derivative na to ay magiging equal kay 0 sa isang number C doon sa interval A, B. Now, paano nga ulit tayo nakapagpakita ng derivative ay equal kay 0? Either we look at the minimum or a maximum, right? Or gumamit tayo ng Rolle's theorem. Okay? And this function is specifically designed para makuha natin yung gusto nating mangyari galing sa Rolle's theorem. Tingnan natin kung paano. Kung ito si H, then we know that uh, or our assumption here is that uh, kaparehas sa kaparehas ng assumption ng Rolle's theorem, as uh, insofar as the continuity and differentiability requirements are concerned, so S si F at saka si J continue sa close differentiable sa open. So ibig sabihin, H is the sum or the difference of a differentiable function and another differentiable function. So essentially, H is also differentiable on a close interval A, B, since the two uh, addends here, the two terms defining H are both differentiable. Tapos, dahil siya, dif uh, dahil siya differentiable, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. actually, ito na lang yung sasabihin ko, si G at saka si F ay continuous din sa open interval A, B. Dahil continuous si G at saka si F, ito ay continuous din, ito ay continuous din, yung difference nila ng dalawa ay continuous din. So I know that H is also continuous on the open interval A B nga lang. At least. Okay? Kasi dun sa endpoints, hindi tayo sure. Pero hindi naman natin kailangan yung mangyari. Tapos ano pa yung kailangan sa Rolle's theorem? Dapat ang H of A ay equal kay H of B. So pag kinuha natin si H of A, equal lamang yan kay F of B minus F of A times G of A minus G of B minus g of a times f of a. And then note that, what, may mga cancel ba? Mm -hmm. hmm. Ah, here. I have a negative f a g a in the first term, but I have a negative negative, so I have a positive g a f a in the second uh, term. So essentially, those two terms will cancel each other out, leaving us with f of b, times g of a minus g of b f of a. Tama nga ba? Sana tama yung algebra ko. Yan yung, h, yan yung h of a. Tapos ang h of b ay kamukha lang naman ito. Kaya lang in-evaluate ko siya sa b. Okay? Tapos may mga cancel ba? Um, let's... Oh, I have here an FB, GB. Tapos meron akong FB, GB. So FB, GB minus FG, FB equal yung kay zero. So ang matitira lamang ay si negative FA times GB. And then minus, minus. So I'll have a plus G of A, F of B, which is essentially equal to H of A. So you just compare these two guys. So therefore, by Rolle's theorem, we have the following. Well, so Rolle's theorem, uh, there exists uh, a number C in the open interval AB such that F prime of C I equal chi zero, okay? Pero ano nga ba yung H prime of C? 
Well, alam na natin yan ay equal kay f of b minus f of a times g prime of c minus g of b minus g of a times f prime at c i equal k zero. And then all you need to do is to transpose this to the other side and we will get the conclusion of uh, the mean value theorem or the generalized mean value theorem. Okay. Tapos pag sure tayo na si g prime ay never nag zero sa interval a, b, then we can divide both sides by g prime of c and g of b minus g of a. Ito yung makukuha nating expression. And that ends the proof ng MVT. And again, the crux here really is indeed on choosing the function h rightfully. You know? So I hope nakakaroon kayo ng idea kung paano kinoconstruct o ano dapat yung kailangang i-construct. Kailangan sila i-tailor fit para magamit natin yung mga previous results para dun sa proof. Okay, and then the last thing for the for this uh, unit, ang iksinung unit number three, ano? Uh, unit number four, ay yung proof ng isang case ng L'Hopital's rule. At dito kailangan natin yung generalized mean value theorem para lang majustify ko sa inyo na ma maraming gamit yung mean value theorem o yung generalized mean value theorem. And one of them is L'Hopital's rule na ginamit natin pa ulit-ulit sa Math 36 without asking for any proof. Ngayon natin siya ipaprove. So, ano yung mga requirements dito? Si F and G, dapat i-assume natin na continuous sa isang interval uh, containing A. Kailangan ko siya maging continuous para mag-exist para mag yung limit ng uh, F of X over G of X. All right? Tapos, uh, ma magkaroon ng relationship between the limit of f and g at a and the function values at a. Now, we, we further assume that f and g are both differentiable. Kailangan ko yung differentiability kasi sa L'Hopital's rule, di ba, ginagamit natin yung derivatives pag compute ng limit ng quotient. So, kaya dapat yung parehas na function ay merong derivative. With a possible exception at the number a. Kasi nga, bakit may exception sa the number a? Kasi hindi kailangan defined lagi sa number a yung inevaluate natin ng derivative right so ah sorry inevaluate natin ng limit kailangan lamang limit point yung number a now if f of a is equal to 0 and g of a is equal to 0 then yung limit daw ng quotient ng derivatives ay equal dun sa limit ng quotient ng original functions at yung sinasabi natin na indeterminate form na pag kumukuha ka ng limit ng ratio ng dalawang functions Pero pag nag-plug in ka sa taas, ang sagot ay 0. Nag-plug in ka sa baba, ang sagot ay 0. 0 over 0, sabi natin, indeterminate form. Para ma-evaluate yung indeterminate form, ang ginagamit natin ay L'Hopital's rule. Dinidifferentiate natin yung taas at saka yung baba, tapos kinukuha natin yung limit nila, tapos for whatever reason sa mga 36, pumayag tayo ng limit nung, nung, uh, nung ratio ng derivatives, ay yun na rin yung limit ng ratio ng original functions. Okay, ngayon natin ipuprove na tama yung ginagawa natin all these years. Otherwise, we had been living a lie for the past, ilang taon na ba? Two years? Simula nung huli yung tinake yung matter to six. So, let's see how the proof goes. Now, part of the assumption is, uh, or part of the antecedent, eto, kasi conditional proof yung sinusulat natin. So, yung, yung antecedent, yung implication na gusto nating i-prove becomes part of the assumptions. So here we are assuming that the limit of f prime over g prime as x approaches a i equal k l. Tapos gagamitin ko yung definition ng limit. Dahil ang limit daw ni f prime over g prime as x approaches a i equal k l. So kahit ano pang epsilon yung i-consider natin, lagi tayo makakahanap ng delta such that whenever uh, a number t is within delta units away from a, then the uh, the quotient of the derivatives at t minus uh, will be within epsilon units away from L. So epsilon delta definition ng limit. Tapos for the same delta, 
Okay, kung ano man yung delta na nandito, magko-consider ako ng isang number x that is within delta units, the same delta units away from x, uh, from a. So kung meron akong uh, a dito, so sabi natin totoo ito sa isang delta neighborhood. Okay. Pipili ako ng x to be within that delta neighborhood. Okay? So, tapos, uh, i-apply ko ngayon. Ano ba? Ito yung napili ko na x. I, uh, sorry. Uh, dito pala sa proof, ang x na pinili ko ay nasa kanan. Pero it doesn't matter kung piliin nyo ay nasa kaliwa. Okay lang din yon. Babalik na rin yung nga lang yung interval na i-consider kung saan nyo gagamitin yung GMVT. Ano ba? Ito yung x kung pinili. Okay? So, meron akong interval ax dito. Tapos, uh, alright, so gagamitin natin yung generalized mean value theorem kay F at saka kay G doon sa close interval AX. Kasi nga, uh, siya ay differentiable at continuous doon sa close at saka open interval AX respectively by means of inheriting the property of F and G per the assumption. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, may nag exist na number C doon sa, doon sa interval AX such that the ratio of the derivatives at the number C ay equal dito. Doon sa changes. Doon sa relative change doon sa function value sa magkabilang endpoint. So itong part na to galing lamang sa MVT o yung existence ng number C na nakakasatisfy niyan ay from the generalized mean value theorem. Okay? But, uh, ano nga ba yung alam natin? Oh, we know that f of a is 0 and g of a is equal to 0 by assumption. So, this guy vanishes as, as, along as this guy. So, magkakaroon lang tayo ng f of g over, ah, sorry, f of x over g of x. Tapos, ano pa yung kagandahan? Si c ay nasa close interval a, b. So, kung si c ay nasa close interval a, b, so, andito siya malamang. Kunwari, nandiyan halimbawa si c. So, ibig sabihin si C ay nasa loob pa rin ng delta neighborhood ni A. So, that means the absolute value of C minus A is less than delta. At dahil si C minus A is less than delta, itong implication na to ay mag-hold for T equals C. Kasi totoo ito sa lahat ng T na nasa loob ng delta neighborhood ni A, e alam natin si number C ay nasa loob ng delta neighborhood ni ni yeah. Nasa loob ng delta neighborhood ni, ni A. Right? So, ibig sabihin, essentially, nag-start tayo rito, F prime of C over G prime of C minus L is less than epsilon, coming from our assumption. Pero at this particular value, okay, uh, napakita natin na yung F prime of C over G prime of C ay equal kay F of X over G of X. So, that means, Totoo rin ito. Or I mean, this guy is equal to this guy. But this guy is less than epsilon coming from our assumption there. So therefore, this is also less than epsilon. As long as x minus a is less than delta. But actually, what we have now is the existence of a delta greater than zero for all epsilon greater than zero, such that whenever your x is, is uh, within delta units away from a, then yung f of x over g of x minus l ay mas maliit kay epsilon, and that is precisely the definition ng limit ni f over g. Okay? So dahil to yung epsilon delta inequality na yan, so ibig sabihin ng limit ng f of x over g of x as x approaches a ay equal kay l, which is our conclusion over here. And that ends the proof right on the bell, 1249 na. All right? So, yeah, I think that's the end of unit number four. So, questions, clarifications, concerns? Mukha naman. So, yan, at least nakikita ko na ngayon na kayo nag -re react bago pa ako magtanong or habang nagtatanong ako. Thank you guys, I appreciate it. So, that means tapos na yung unit. So, next time, next week, we'll start with a brand new unit. Pero sige, uh, in-extend natin again yung uh, deadline ng problem set to Sunday right before midnight para sa Monday naman mag-work na kayo sa homework number 6. 
Tapos, start tayo sa Tuesday ng unit number five. And hopefully, we finish homework number five in... I'm hoping to finish it uh, three to four meetings para siguro last week of May, pwede ko nang ibigay yung problem set para hindi na siya sumabay. Or actually, may proposition ako. Okay lang ba na ibigay ko siya ng mas maaga kahit hindi pa natin tapos yung unit? Uh, ibibigay ko na ng maaga yung problem set para pwede nyo nang simulan yung mga yung mga earlier parts niya na covered na yun na discuss natin. Tapos para pagka pag, padating na, patapos na, uh, konti na lang yung tatapusin nyo, konti na lang yung sasabay with the other uh, problem sets you have in other courses. Tapos mas mahaba syempre yung time kasi uh, habang nagdi-discuss ako, nasa inyo na yung questions sa problem sets, pwede nyo na siyang unti-untiin. Okay? So, uh, yeah, I... Uh, that would be my suggestion, and let's see how it goes, okay? All right, thank you, Jericho. So, payag daw si Jericho, hopefully kayo rin. So, pag ko siya over the weekend. But I think that's it for today, so thank you guys for coming. Enjoy the uh, the weekend, so uh, kahit meron pang Friday bukas, pero weekend na para sa atin, and let's see each other again on, uh, on Tuesday. But until then, keep safe, guys, and uh, try to enjoy, you know? Kailangan nating magpakasaya kahit on our little ways ngayong mga trying times. Ano? So that's it guys. Bye-bye.